Dear children, today we will learn about vector. In physics, you may have learned some physical quantities. So here you give some examples of physical quantities. Uh, you say distance, distance is a physical quantity. Displacement, velocity, speed, acceleration, force, work, power, energy, pressure. There are lots of physical quantities. So, in these physical quantities, some quantities have only magnitude and some quantities have both magnitude and direction. So depending upon the direction of the physical quantities, we classify these quantities into two types. One is your scalar quantities color quantities the other one is your vector quantities what is color quantity and what is vector quantity so you remember the quantities which have only magnitude are called as scalar quantities vector quantities the quantities which have both magnitude, direction and another point is that that must obey the laws of vector addition. So vector quantities are the quantities which have magnitude, direction and obey the laws of vector addition. So you remember scalar quantities, these quantities have only magnitude, vector quantities, the quantities which have both magnitude and direction and obey. The laws of vector addition. The laws of vector addition, what do you mean by laws of vector addition? We'll discuss later. Now you remember only the quantities which have both magnitude and direction and obey the laws of vector addition are called as vector quantities. Now, you say distance. What is distance? Distance, it is the length of the path covered by a body. It's called as distance. Suppose, I will ask, what is the distance of your school from your home? If you will say it is 2 km, is it sure that if one can go 2 km from your home, can he reach at the school? What will be your answer? Answer is no. Because here, in which direction the person has to go is not mentioned, is not told. So from this, suppose your school is east, in the east direction from your home. If a person if just you told that the distance of your school from your home is 2 km, if a person goes 2 km in the 
west direction from your home can you reach no so from distance you see here only it has the magnitude so from distance if you say the distance of school from your home a person cannot reach at the school if direction is not told to him so what is your conclusion conclusion is that distance has only magnitude as distance has only magnitude so distance is considered as scalar quantity so now come to displacement what is displacement displacement is it is a straight line distance between initial position and final position and is directed towards the final position that means in the displacement you have both magnitude and direction if the same question is asked for the displacement of your school from your home if you say it is 2 km towards east so definitely a person can reach at the school if displacement is told to him because here direction is told if he goes 2 km towards east from your home then he can reach at the school so here in displacement you have both magnitude as well as direction so displacement is considered as a vector quantity so distance is scalar and displacement is vector similarly if you say speed What is speed? Speed is distance travelled by a body per unit time. As distance is scalar, so speed is scalar. But what is velocity? Velocity is it is the displacement travelled by a body. Or you need that as a displacement is a vector quantity, so velocity is a vector quantity. Similarly, if you say force, now force is a scalar quantity or a vector quantity. You see. the unit of the force you remember it is newton if you say a force is of 10 newton so if you say force of 10 newton then effect of that force is not understood only from its magnitude 10 newton 10 newton is the magnitude of the force so the effect of the force is not understood from only its magnitude then how here i can explain suppose it is a road it is a road a body is moving towards right now you apply a force 10 newton on the body if the body initially moving with a speed of 10 meter per second then what happens if 10 newton force is applied on the body so here the speed will increase speed will increase when the speed will increase if the 
force acts on the body in the same direction of motion of the body. If the same 10 Newton force acts in the opposite direction to the motion of the body, then what happens? You see here. Here what happens? The speed will decrease when force acts opposite to the direction of motion of the body. Here speed will decrease. Then what is your conclusion? Here from only magnitude 10 Newton the effect of the force is not understood. So to understand the effect of the force here we need both magnitude as well as the direction of the force. Then what is your conclusion? Force is a scalar or a vector? Definitely force is a vector quantity. If I will say time, time whether it is 5 second or 5 minute or 5 hour. Here the time has no direction. So time is considered as a scalar quantity. Similarly, electric current, here is exception. Electric current it has both magnitude as well as direction. Still, electric current is considered as a scalar quantity because it doesn't obey the laws of vector addition. So there is a vector addition, you will learn it, but here, just I will give some idea, suppose it is a wire, it is a wire, another wire, first wire, second wire, suppose here, 2 ampere of current is coming to the junction O, here, 3 ampere current is coming, to the point O, then what is the current going through this wire? So definitely it is 3 plus 2 that will be 5 ampere. So whatever this angle between these two arms, if you change the angle, then there will be no change this current. Here this current will be definitely the sum of algebraic sum of this 2 and 3. If it is I1 current, if it is I2 current, if it is I, then definitely I is equal to I1 plus I2, whatever the angle between these two wires may be. It is simple the algebraic addition. So you remember that electric current do it has both magnitude and direction it is regarded as scalar quantity as it doesn't obey the laws of vector addition so now come to how do you represent a vector quantity representation of a vector quantity just told a vector quantity has both magnitude as well as direction so here we want to represent a vector quantity means we have to represent both magnitude as well as direction. So vector quantity can be represented by a line with arrow on it. 
that is the vector quantity is represented by a directed line segment which gives you the magnitude and which gives you the direction the length of the line gives you the magnitude and this arrow gives you the direction the length of the line length of line gives you the magnitude and arrow gives you the direction of the quantity so now i will ask some questions on it it is a vector a vector it is b vector so to represent a vector quantity in symbol how do we represent you write the symbol of the quantity let it be a and you put a arrow on it it is your a vector if you write only a it indicates the magnitude of a vector or to represent magnitude you have to give mod sign on the a vector so it is the representation of a vector in symbol so now it is a vector it is b vector now tell me what's about their magnitudes and what's about their directions so definitely here it is the more length definitely its magnitude is more b vector magnitude is more a vector magnitude is less and what's about the direction you see this arrow gives you the direction a vector is directed towards right also b vector is directed towards right that means here b vector has more magnitude and b vector has same direction as that of a vector if i put arrow towards left on b vector so now tell me what's about their magnitudes and what's about their directions as its length is more b vector length is more definitely the magnitude of b vector is more than the magnitude of a vector and direction of b vector is opposite to the direction of a vector now the angle between the two vectors angle between two vectors it is vector a it is vector b it is the angle between the two vectors a and b so you remember the angle between two vectors means it is the angle between their directions a vector direction is like this towards right and b vector direction is like this so it is the angle between the two vectors not this it is the angle between the two vectors now if i will ask it is a vector and it is b vector so now tell me what is the angle between a vector and b vector if you will say this is the angle now you see a vector direction is towards right you see and b vector direction is towards this so the angle between a vector and b vector that is this not this so you remember 
the angle between two vectors means it is the angle between their directions here one vector ends at here and another vector starts from here it is the starting point it is the end point of a vector similarly if it is a vector if it is b vector it is the starting point and it is the end point of a vector so here a vector terminates at this point and b vector starts the angle between two vectors is not this the angle is such that the two vectors start from a point that means if you extend the vector a like this now you see it is the starting point of the a vector and also it is the starting point of the b vector this angle is theta it is the angle between two vectors so you remember it is better to remember the angle between two vectors means that is between their directions in the next class we will learn about types of vectors